It's going to take much more than a monsoon to even break the ice on ending this drought. Think about it. Um, you know, if if you didn't get paid for three months and then, you know, your employer gave you a normal paycheck and said, OK, now we're back to normal. Well, you know, you're back to normal for that paycheck, but you're not you're not back to normal for those three months of pay that you lost. Lake Mead reached historic lows last month with the threat of water shortage looming. High elevation snowpacks are well below normal for much of the West and pretty much gone for Sierra Nevada. Snowmelt is the number one driving force in keeping water reservoirs full. We are not seeing typically the snowpack uh, in the winter season which generates most of the runoff, which fills the reservoirs. Um, people can assume it'll rain and fill the reservoirs, but uh, that is gonna take uh, a lot of rain. Most of our region's water comes in the form of snow. When we experience snow drought, there are devastating economic, environmental, and social impacts. Greater flood risk uh, during the wet times uh, because that snowpack is less reliable, and it means that we have uh, you know, less water supply in, in the dry times because uh, that, that snow uh, is not there in the same uh, quantities of reliability. As global and local temperatures rise, less of that precipitation drops in the form of snow and high winds can cause snow to evaporate. This year was actually forecast to be the uh, third lowest uh, runoff uh, for the entire Colorado River Basin. Climate models are predicting that these snow droughts will become more frequent as our climate continues to change. Coming up at 6, how too much rain isn't necessarily a good thing. Reporting, I'm Brigai, 13 Action News.